Good day, ladies and gentlemen. In today's adventure, we're going to be looking at the Inshore Fisheries Research Division with the Department of Natural Resources. Um, if you're watching this video, that means that you probably want to go experience this along with me, and hopefully we'll be able to take a couple of you along at a time. So a picture is worth a thousand words, um, and this picture is probably worth more than that. I will start this explanation by introducing you to a couple of buddies of mine, wildlife biologists Maggie Jameson and Liz Vineyard. Uh, Maggie and Liz were kind enough to carry me along in a trammel study uh, in August of 2019. I had a blast and uh, learned quite a lot, learned quite a lot. And hopefully, again, you'll be able to uh, experience this as well. Uh, one thing about being a technician is you always have to be concerned with the weather. You have to be willing to work in hot conditions and cold conditions and stormy conditions and wet conditions and dry conditions and uh, just be aware of the safety situations of the environment. Speaking of the environment, we are uh, here for near shore fisheries or inshore fisheries, which means that we're in some Spartina wetlands in the pluff mud, some of my favorite habitat to be in. Uh, looking at this picture, you're probably noticing something weird. For example, the engine is at the bow of the boat. That makes the boat steer a little bit interestingly, to say the very least. Uh, the purpose for the location of the motor, though, is that there's a trammel net at the stern. And most of the work that you're going to notice is going to be out of the stern. Uh, when we're dropping the net and when we're pulling it in to pull the fish out, all that work takes place at the stern of the boat. And if there were an engine there, it wouldn't be possible. So natural resources management is about, you know, finding what works. You'll notice that uh, Liz and Maggie are wearing their PPE. In this case, they've got their bibs to uh, protect their bodies and their clothing from fish slime. Uh, but in this picture, they're not wearing their PFDs because with this particular type of study, it's determined that the PPE, the personal protective equipment of a PFD, is more dangerous to be caught in the net than to, uh, so you notice they don't have any buttons or anything on the top. And you shouldn't, if you go on this survey either, wear any buttons on the top. Uh, smooth shirts. But when we're in transit, we wear our uh, Coast Guard approved PFD. Tools of the trade I'll talk about in just a second. Uh, normally these are stowed, but because we're getting ready to collect some data or write some data down, it's out on the uh, box. So what you're about to see is some inshore sampling using trammel nets. I think I got, uh, I got a couple of different runs on there, but we're going to just look at one to start with. Uh, as you're doing this, I want you to think about what the target species were for this survey and what the non-target species were. And as you're going through, see if you can catch, pick up on some of the standard operating procedures for this particular survey. This is what our tools of the trade look like. A couple of things that I want to point out to you. Uh, we have a couple of different types of tags, depending on the type of fish. We've got cinch tags, which are these green tags. We've got the belly tags, which have the metal part in them, uh, the anchor, which go in the belly. There are also shoulder tags, but I don't see any pictured here. We've got three different taggers. The top tagger beside the insect repellent is for um, the cinch tags. You'll put the cinch tags down in that hollow point and poke it through the fish and then remove the uh, tagger and cinch it back through. The uh, shoulder tagger is the bottom one. And then um, the belly tag requires something else. The scissors look like regular scissors, and they are. These were used to uh, collect uh, fin samples. I believe it's the anal fin samples of red drum to use in genetic studies. And of course, there's a sun protection factor in there, an insect repellent, because when you're out in the environment, sometimes it gets rough. The scalpel is there for the belly tags, and I think I've got a picture of a belly tag in a second. And the betadine is in there. Uh, anytime you have to pierce the fish, whether it's for the um, cinch tags or the shoulder tags or the belly tags, 
you dip the material in betadine to prevent infection. Here's Liz with a sheep's head. I know it's a sheep's head because it's got the uh, increased spines on the back side. It could also be a, a black drum because of the, the black and the white, but I can tell from this angle that it is a sheep's head and she's measuring it on the bump board. You can also see the uh, oxygen in the front of the cooler, which is used to keep DO high in the uh, live well to keep the fish healthy. Here is a black drum. You see the secondary dorsal fin is not as spiny as that of the sheep's head. You see the belly tag on the bottom. So uh, what Liz would do is take the scalpel and remove a couple of the scales from the area of the tag, and then she would make a very small incision, just big enough for that anchor, slide it into the belly. Uh, of course, it would have been cleaned with betadine, and then she gently tugs on it to make sure that it's set. Such a beautiful fish. Another gorgeous fish, one of my favorites, is this red drum, another target species. I think she's, uh, I believe we've already taken the genetic sample and she may be preparing it to tag. Sometimes they tag based on um, uh, group size. And there's uh, an example of a southern flounder with a cinch tag that uh, cinch tag that extends beyond the green portion would be snipped off so as to not attract attention. And for uh, certain species or in certain size classes, they may get two separate cinch tags on the same fish just in case one of them. with sticks. So I'm going to do it.
like a like a J stroke in a canoe. Like, and then yeah, he's kind of prying the boat. Tip or spinner. Or fine, uh, fine tooth. Fine tooth. Oh, look at it. It's a gar. They fit as well as OJ's gloves fit, how about that?
caught a tag shark number one. I need to catch. Uh, it was black tip. Nice. Female. Okay. She was about three and a half feet. Uh, little baby. Little baby. But she had so a tag. So was... As we pull in, we want to go just the same pace and then just make sure that the net stays in the net well. Gotcha. Fishy fish fish fish. Yeah, we got something. Marble on the chin, I thought it was no. a southern kingfish. Today. It was my bad juju. I spread it. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. I spilled coffee instantly on this morning. I was like, oh, it's going to be one of those days. Okay. I got a speeding ticket in um, St. Stephen's. I don't speed. They're looking for anybody not from that area, probably. So if you want to kick that to the corner, it'll help ensure that it. Okay, when we get to the heading to the net. To the that yeah. corner, okay. So that way if you continue to lay down, it'll stay in the well well. And if you can try and keep it like close to the edge of the boat, that'll allow for the wind blowing a lot of it over to the third side. We'll stay in. I can then get very Southern kingfish. Oh, uh, yeah, we call, I mean, whatever. Most whiting typically. you have to bring them out the other way. Yeah. Push them through. Yeah. So if we say is it gilled, that's what we mean. Noticing these are all on the sink Head line. line. Yeah, so you're going to get more of the um, mullet and other, yeah. Thank you, that's the word. Volunteers on the float line just 
in the beginning, well, until they get the thing. That also means I get the gar. That also means you get the gar. What am I staying on here? favorite one, don't snap it. <laughs> that was the first one I ever touched. Oh, maybe it is you. Yeah. It very well may be. I just... Every now and then if you need to like step on it, whatever you need to do. Oh, oh, oh. I got one, you got one. I don't know if you need a hand. Min Hayden. Yep, sorry, yeah. I know. Menhaden usually can just come right through. He's thinking about body shape, you know? Yeah. Lacey E action going on. Yeah. Usually we can just skip through like that. Yep. Yes, the orange flagging. Mm -hmm. The middle one is pink. Past the gills, we're pushing him through. Yeah, so just get it off of his face oh, yeah. as much as you can and then push it down. There we go. I didn't need to take it from you. It's okay. You can have the gar. Yes. <laughs> Toothy. How good are these gloves? 
surprisingly not bad to handle. Are you on the inside or the outside? So it looks like there's a pocket right there. And if you get the body out first, then you can... Yep, exactly. Come here. If we come to this side, give me your body. It'll bend pretty well, too. There we go. So, get that through. Sorry, I'm not holding this. I will. My fault. What do you do with him? Just leave him in the... Uh, so they, they, all their slime makes it so the other fish can't breathe. It covers their limbs. So since they can be there, you can leave them on the deck. Rough tail? Yeah, so we're going to remove the spine before we... I hate to have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull real quick? Yes, yeah. so don't go anywhere. So don't touch it until... We'll take the spine out. Get it out of the net. Measure it and sex it for her. I have the measuring board I have here. Dang it, I will take it for me. Do I need to worry about keeping him in the water or is he alright in the air? Um, the guard doesn't matter as much. The that fish there. this time of year. They regenerate them. They're fine. So it's just the time of year that they tend to get the second one coming in and they'll be like kind of buried underneath that top one. So she is here somewhere. Tell me where you want my hands to help you. Yep. Fine. Here it is. Good belly flop. Put this in real quick so she doesn't come back. Remember 611 female. This way. So you could like grab, grab that. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Small ones are much nicer. That one's all kind of tangled. Not it. It's a croaker, so at least it's you know it'll fit. You know.
layer of webbing between you and the object that you're going for. You know it's on the other side. Is that a mullet I saw? Trying to swim away. Come here, buddy. Before you escape. Oh, that was good. Just in the nick of time you got through. So when that happens, do you do you have law enforcement? I don't know. No, no. we just um, we just go to a different site and try and wait for them to if someone's fishing, come out yeah. if they're fishing on it. So ideally, we get six sites per boat. We have another two that are chosen as alternates in case something like that happens. Tell it to us now. Twist here at the end, we'll just pull through it. Stepping out, you might notice that you got cupped. So just be careful. Why not? So now we're going to measure and work up everything. Um, Calibrate. Yep. Do you have a timer on that? Like when it turns off? No. There's a, I, can, I set it to the max amount of hours for it to, I mean time for it to stay on. So is that just a battery issue then? For it to turn off like that? Yeah. But I can't check the battery unless I actually physically take them out and check them. Which means I'm clipping everything. So when this DO gets to about 100%, we've already calibrated. You did not calibrate it? I did not calibrate okay. it. So when that percent DO settles out, let me know and we can calibrate it. Or I'll, we can just wait. So Liz is going to measure everything. Oh, I guess maybe you need to do one of these. Volunteer for him. As far as I, you're concerned, I don't exist at the moment. Yeah. some of them for education. 
education. Did you ever decide like try that they weren't interested in our fish anymore? Education is it? Yeah. Well we'll use them for our next tour that we do. Just below the surface. Just below the surface? Yep. Moving the probe to maintain proper DO. Yeah. You got is that it. Is part of your standard operating procedure? Yes, it is. And then until it kind of reaches its kind of plateau. Yeah. Trillion parts per thousand. Yeah, you need conductivity too? No, that's only for electric fishing. Uh, we'll take water temp. 28.3 C. Okay. So then that's done, and we'll get an air temp, which is another, which generally we try and keep in the shade. Today that's not a problem. <laughs> Out of the wind. Yeah. Out of the wind. Try to keep it so dry. If you want to cover the probe. Yeah, you got it. down you want this you want to just keep draining it yeah a little bit more is fine back to croaker 200 
I'm gonna hit him. Yeah. Yeah. I only recall one spot. I mean, one. Me and Aiden in one. Yeah, I think. Oh, I got one more croaker. You're hiding. Last croaker is 177. Okay. Two spot, I'm in Hayden and a mullet. So we don't measure them? We will. She's oh. just telling me. She's trying, yeah. I'm going to squeeze it onto one. Okay. Make it work. Spot standards 162. Hmm? 154. I'm in Hayden.